How to sell anything to anyone at any time with any price. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to sell anything to anyone. So you're gonna to wanna to stick around. If anything, grab a pen and paper, maybe take some notes. But if you're driving, of course, don't try to write and drive. You wanna focus on the road. But you're definitely gonna to wanna to at least save this link, even share the link. And if this is your first time even finding the link, be sure to hit the subscription button. If you've already subscribed, be sure to hit the bell because you're gonna to wanna to be notified of any content that I'm gonna upload in 2019 because you're always just one video away from unlocking your potential and reaching that greater self that you're striving to become. So I wanna, uh, first off, give a side note. Again, every Thursday, every single Thursday, uh, I brought back Breakfast of Champions, which is a 30 minute live stream. It's being hosted on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, uh, as well as a live EDU. And as, in terms of, of content and topics, what it's gonna be a mixture of, of course, because most of the, the content here is gonna be predominantly for mortgage loan officers, inside loan officers, outside loan officers, purchase agents, refinance agents. But I'm also gonna sprinkle some awareness of what selling is. And that's, that's one of the main themes, of course, of this video, as I teach you how to sell anything to anyone in 2019, you're gonna to wanna to un understand the difference between marketing, selling, and closing. So if you're ready for the show, let's go. What's up everybody, welcome back to Sales Remastered. My name is Daniel and I'm your host. And on this episode, we're gonna talk about how to sell anything to anyone in 2019. So as I just mentioned, one of the very first things that we really need to do is understand the difference between marketing, selling, and closing. We have to understand that those are actually three different things. I personally believe anyone can sell anyone, even from the most introverted to the extroverted, from the most shy to the most non-shy, right? So the reason why is because selling is, is really just, is more focused on explaining why you are number one, why you're the best, right? Why you're the greatest, why, why your company is the greatest. That's really selling. Marketing is, is, uh, is, is talking about your different products or maybe there's a special or there's a sale, there's a clearance sale. Um, you know, to attract interest, to give you a little bit more attention. And then when you capture that attention from your marketing, then you can sell them on ter in terms of why they should choose you, why you're great, why you're the best, why you're the most reliable, why you're accountable, things like that. That's selling. But what we're trying to really do is close that person. And, you know, close is such a funny term to it. If you know, if you think about it, it's not really closing. If anything, you're actually opening them up so that you can create this relationship to where they buy from you. So I don't, you know, really what, what I, I guess the backstory of closing is just to close the sale, like just make it official. And that's ultimately what we want to do, right? But I want you to pay attention to something because when you hear things or when you hear certain words, we all as human beings will assume that it's, that it's talking about closing, like, so if you think that like, hey, if I, I'm gonna teach you how to sell anyone to any, it's anything to anyone, you may automatically think that I'm talking about closing, but that's the assumption, that's the power of assumption. So if you did think that way, you know, it's okay, it's not your fault, but in this video, what you're gonna do is you're really gonna um, understand the difference between marketing, selling, and closing, and those are three different things that you need to understand because everything is kind of broken down into um, sequential order, right? Like the, the process of creating a sale is typically done in sequential order. So from like a, a very general, broad kind of view, you have marketing, selling, and closing. That's typically how it's done. But in each and every single module, marketing, selling, and closing, there are little pillars. There are little kind of, uh, how can I put it? The little intricacies that you have to make sure you do in order to make that module or in order to make that pillar work to, you know, to its absolute best. And so what we're gonna talk about here is selling and closing, right? Marketing, I think anyone can really market a sale, right? It's very easy to market. But where we kind of get caught up in, in actually making the close is we don't know when to stop the closing. So you see, when, when we go into a sales conversation, sometimes some of us, We'll, we'll over market, like we'll talk about the, the specials, we'll talk about the rates, we'll talk about the fees, and we'll talk about specials like no cost offers and things like that, and that's marketing. But the problem is though, you already got their attention, that's why they're connected with you. And, and, and then there's another segment of the salesmen that, that when they get into the sales conversation, they oversell. And so there's this, there's this kind of this point where you gotta stop selling and actually convert it into a close. 
And I think that when we understand where those kind of where those pivots are, where those uh, forks in the road per se, where you have to either make a decision, you can continue selling, but you're good, the chances are if you go that way, you're gonna oversell them or you're gonna pivot to the close because you know that they're ready. They're giving you buy signs. Um, you know, like, oh, okay, sounds great. What do we do next? Like that's a buy sign, right? So um, so first off, take a step back, understand the difference and understand that, that selling and closing are two different things. Selling is all about, you know, why they should choose you and, and how fun it is to work with you, how great it is to work with you. But closing is where you actually get that commitment, is where you get the yes, where you get them to sign the dotted line, where you get them to lock the loan, where you get them to um, to pay for the appraisal, where you get them to meet with the notary, where you get them to do these pieces of compliance that are required in order to make the sale a sale. Get it? So one key ingredient in actually how to close someone is you have to really understand their why. And, and in, in, in bare terms, you really have to understand what it is that they need, right? And the, I think the challenge is though, is that most consumers, they don't know what they need. But what they what they do know is what they know what they want, right? They, they'll tell you what they want. And we as, as salesmen sometimes have to get very creative in order to interrogate, to extract the information that we need to convert them, to make them believe that we're the only one that has a solution. But, the, but here's an example. So when someone calls you and they say, I just want the lowest rate, what's your rate? You see, some of us who are just into selling and marketing and don't know how to actually close, their response is going to be, well, oh, okay, well, our lowest rate is, you know, and you'll read maybe the floor rate or you'll read an adjustable rate to try to persuade them and trick them into get <laughs> like you want to bamboozle them like, oh, well, my lowest rate is 2.5, sir, and hoping that they assume it's a 30 year fix. But where I'm getting at is, is typically the, the average or the mediocre agent's going to say, okay, well, what rate do you have right now? And if you're saying that, if you're saying that, I'm not, I'm not discrediting you. It's not your fault. You know, you, if you're average or mediocre, it's not your fault. A lot of times it's the training and the resources and the guidance and the influence that you have right now. So it's not your fault. Fortunately for you though, you do have now at sales remastered on your stream. So be sure to check the links below. Add me to the streams on your other social media channels. Be sure if you're there, make sure that I'm there too and, and, and add me because again, you're just one piece of content away from opening your eyes to how to really play this game. Anyway, back to the story. So when we go into into a sales conversation and we hear what the prospect wants, right? Like, uh, I just want your lowest rate. We have to, we have to slow down. We have to understand that, that this is a point where we're, we're at, again, another crossroad. We're at another fork in the road where we're either going to go this way and talk about fees too soon and talk about closing costs and, and serving them the lowest adjustable rate fee crossed fingers that they think it's a fixed rate or we're going to go this other direction where we're going to dig a little bit deeper and find out their why you see what motivates us and what influences us is really our why well the reason why you're watching this is because you have a deeper reason why it's not like because you like seeing me in my gym clothes it's not because you like watching some filipino dude sit inside of his car talk about sales the reason why you're spending the time watching this content is because you have a deeper reason why some of you are different though right so so your why is different than mine so your why could be like um, well I just want to get over this challenge that's stopping me from making pay some of you are like dude I need to get over this challenge or really learn this game or I'm gonna get fired some of you are like man I just need to step up my game because I've hit this plateau and I just can't get to the next level and I'm doing more actions and more spinning my wheels and I'm not getting the pay that I want so everyone has their deeper why but that's the real deeper why does that make sense so these prospects are the exact same way boo boo so when they when they come up to you and they say I want a lowest rate what we have to hear is that they need help they need help to lower their payment and it is our job to extract creatively uh, what they plan to do with the savings or why they need the savings and what we're gonna find is that they they actually need the savings to help them get to the next level now I got a video that I'm gonna upload um, soon it's gonna it's gonna be called how to turn an app to a sale or how to turn an app to a closed sale and I need you to pay attention to that because that that actually addresses and I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link below this video, but if I don't, go ahead and take a gander of my videos at Sales Remastered on Facebook or on YouTube. You'll definitely catch it there. Again, the, the title of the video is called How to Turn an App to a Closed Sale. 
And what, what, it, what it's about is how to really orchestrate the conversation in a way where you're extracting the exact pieces to discover their why. And when you get to discover their why, really what you're discovering is their, their fear or their pain. And in every single sale, it is our job to extract those pieces while at the same time lure them to give us more attention to follow us to the closing table. Because when we make the close, all we're announcing to them is the information that we've collected and extracted from them during the sales conversation. You see, the close is where you influence them to move forward and give you their commitment, whether it's a money down deposit, whether it's a lock appraisal. You know, in, a, in the process of an actual closed sale, though, there's many times where you have to close them. But where you get that official close, of course, at the very end is when the loan funds. So that's actually a closed sale. But how do you make these multiple sales through, or closes throughout the entire process? Well, what you do first is you have to identify what motivates them, what influences them. Are they trying to run away from fear? Are they trying to rid pain? Are they trying to get closer to joy or, or happiness? And these are emotions. Emotions are the most powerful thing that rule all of us, right? There's, there's emotional of fear that rules us. There's emotion of love that rules us. There's emotion of, of lust that can rule us. We have to understand what their primary emotion is and what their entire reason of their why. And, and then when we, when we expose that, when we identify that, then we actually have to you know, announce it because sometimes they don't know that, that it's their own fear, but we're able to kind of see it. We can't assume like what we assumed in reading the title of this video that is going to talk about, oh, how to sell anything to anyone. Man, that must mean closing. You see, you assume that because you're anchored to think selling is closing. No, no, boo boo. Those are two different things. So going back to the story where, where we can use the, the, the assumption factor in terms of in our favor, we can actually make them assume that, that we will only move forward in the sales conversation if we can help them, right? Um, we, we also cannot assume though that they understand what their deeper reasons of, or their deeper needs are, what, what actually is controlling them. And sometimes, well, oftentimes it's fear. But when we go into the close and when we take that fork in the road and we go in the direction of actually closing that sales conversation and getting that commitment, we have to address and assess their fears, right, or their pain, or their deeper reasons why, and then announce it to them. Actually, actually, re, rephrase it and, and and put it in a creative way where they hear it out loud, and then they're you're kind of framing the the actual close, right, the actual commitment. And how you do this is you you announce it so they hear it. Number one, you're you're gaining rapport because they you they feel like you know them. And then number two, they, they, they're hearing it, so they, they kind of get the snap, like a, like a punch of reality, if that makes sense. But you're conditioning them to a point where like, oh man, things are really bad, or oh man, you, you're right, you know, I, I actually do need to address that. And then once you, once you actually frame them by, by, by announcing those, those pains and, and that need throughout that conversation that you extracted, you can then provide the solution, and that becomes your, your actual bridge to the close because you're actually providing the solution to fix those and address those pains, address those those problems, right? Like you're, you're basically drawing them a map of how to get exactly what they need. But it, you'll find that it had nothing to do with what they said that they wanted at the very beginning of the conversation. Does that make sense? So yeah, they want a lower rate, but how you need to hear it is that they need help with lowering their payment. Or you might say, they might tell you, um, uh, I want your no cost option. But what you need to hear is saying that, please don't book me. <laughs> please don't book me, say, Mr. Salesman. Does that make sense? So they're just, it's just their guard, right? Don't get defensive and say, oh, well, of course there are closing costs. I'm going to talk to this guy for 50 minutes and try to wear him out so he doesn't want to do this again. You got to get off that train. So be sure to watch that that video of how to turn an app to, to a closed sale because it's going to show you quickly how to kind of maneuver through the conversation where you don't got to spend 50 minutes on the con on the phone call to wear him out in hopes that he doesn't talk to anyone else. That dude's going to talk to someone else, man. Like they're, they're going to talk to someone else if they don't feel that you have the solution for their need. If they don't feel that you're the only viable solution, you're the unique value. You have a unique value proposition for them or a unique kind of niche for them where you're kind of tailor fit to them. And, 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 and then finally, when you're going into the close, when you identify the needs and then you cover the solutions, then you have to guide them to the closing table. You have to actually walk them, you know, push them, motivate them. And there's so many different things that you got to do to kind of, you know, uh, lure them to, to push them to go forward. Things like the words that you use, the words that you say, the tonality that you use. Like I want you to think about, um, you know, if someone told you 
that like, like like someone was showing you somewhere right there's a different tone like a salesman like if we ask uh, directions or we're looking for something into a, in us at a store a salesman's gonna give us that tone oh yeah watch come here and so what we do right there's that tonality that makes you kind of want to follow and so we got to do that type of tonality when we're sitting at the close because we have to we have to move them forward they don't know that they're moving forward because you're you're actually kind of bringing them on a ride through your tonality. It's some real powerful stuff. If you want to learn more about that, I got a ton of videos about that. But ultimately, again, what you're doing is you're 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 exposing their pain, providing the solution, and then and then pushing them towards the actual commitment. If you do this right, you're gonna close anyone at any given time, any fee, any rate, and price. Because the 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 that trick, the hack, is that the close during the close when you're actually getting that commitment their focus has been shifted from the from the fee the cost your your premium your retail rate your whatever it is your points and and what their focus now now is is how bad they need that solution that you have and this is how to get the solution you see ironically people will pay premiums for convenience people will pay premiums for speed people will pay premiums for a quick fix a quick solution this is just facts but sometimes as salesmen, we get too caught up in our thoughts. Overthinking really kills your success. Overthinking kills happiness. And if you overthink things, it's gonna come out through your tonality. It's kinda like someone where you know they're lying or someone where you know they're nervous about telling you something. You can hear in their tone, right? Like you discredit the message. Even though the message was was great and valuable, like you just, <laughs> like that's probably why a lot of people are saying, okay, well, let me think about it because they don't have confidence in your tone. They need to have confidence in you, man. So I hope that this video helps and I hope that you take the pieces, watch the next video, uh, how to turn an app into a closed sale. It's really gonna show you uh, kind of a step-by-step -step process of how I maneuver through the conversation to extract the exact needs and then transition to a pitch and then push them towards the close. And uh, leave your comments below. Don't forget to like the video, share the link with your sales team, and be sure to check out the links in the notes of this video so you can put me on the stream of your social media uh, accounts as well. So if you're on Twitter, if you're on Snapchat, if you're on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, if you're on LinkedIn, go add me, bruh. Go click the links right below. I made it super easy for you so that you can check out my credentials and you can just like the page, subscribe, hit the bell, and, uh, and yeah, let's build together. I'll see you on the next video. Bye.